For a lot of gamers, it's a dream to be able to make money playing your favorite title, whether that's Fortnite, League of Legends, or Call of Duty. In my case, this was Call of Duty Mobile. Still, even though it's not the game you're trying to go pro in, whether it is or is not, I'd recommend you to watch this whole video through because a lot of this is applicable. You can apply it to other games and other paths. And remember, this is more so my experience and hopefully it will help you guys achieve your goals as well. Now let's begin. No one starts as a pro in any game. There are probably those rare exceptions, people that competed in other titles, played betas for new ones, and just so happened to know a lot of people and get successful fat. Unfortunately, while this is probably the most logical path to going pro in any game, it's not the path most taken, I would argue. Take for example, my story. I've been playing Call of Duty my entire life, but the first games I seriously played weren't highly competitive, and of course, I played them mostly for fun in my free time. In fact, the last video game I actually played was Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and at the time, I wasn't even 18, so the thought of making money on a game didn't even occur to me. Still, I moved on with life, did a lot, and fast forward almost 10 years later, and I downloaded Call of Duty Mobile. Now, I wasn't one of those beta grinders that played for leaderboard, but I downloaded it because I didn't have a PC or gaming device, and I remembered how much I loved Call of Duty. The year is 2022, I've just downloaded the game, downloaded Discord, and was in the official Discord channel looking to make connections in the community. Like I said, there was nothing particularly crazy about how I started to play the game. At first, I was just looking for clans to join, and I found quite a few. Matter of fact, it really made me a fan of the game. I even found myself watching some of the esports events that were going on and at some point I decided there has to be something better than just rank and public matches. So I gave my shot at competitive, starting at where everybody else started, I would assume, who didn't have connections already, which was T3 or Tier 3. And there are three tiers, Tier 3, Tier 2, and Tier 1. Now. Obviously, I wasn't the best player, but I had a few things which most people should have if they're trying to get into esports, especially at a later time in the game's release. Those few things were a hunger to know more about the game and how it worked, a curiosity with the mechanics, and an understanding of what makes a good player a good player, uh, and a desire to kind of increase my game knowledge and intelligence, and of course, finally, practice. Now, at the time, I also thought it would be a good idea to start a YouTube channel, because if I could help others learn about the game or be able to watch my own gameplay back, then that would also help me to grow. My original name on Call of Duty Mobile was actually Got Ghosted, and eventually I had someone ask me what I really wanted to be known for and what I wanted to do with this, and I realized that what I wanted to achieve was excellence, which is what I ended up renaming myself to. Now, part two. Now, at the time of me coming up, this had been about three or four months in, and finally other people started to take notice and see my potential. Uh, and a big thing I did was grind the leaderboards for certain weapons and eventually grind the leaderboard for players getting as high as the top 200 to 300 players on the leaderboards, and even at some point grinding for top 100. Now, I didn't look to maintain this for a long period of time because I, I, I think I think I kind of knew innately that it would not really mean that much to the professional community. Um, and at the end of the day, playing ranked and being on leaderboards and playing against kind of the general population of players was not the same as playing against experienced pros with years of practice. Still, I was excited because I was finally getting chances and recognition to show what I could do as I kind of stayed in Discord communities and stayed on the game and I was able to meet a lot of people. And they tried to form teams, needed players, and eventually invited me to a bunch of servers where I was able to expand, network, and find really good teams. Now, of course, a lot of these teams starting out were not professional grade, but still it was a great place for me to get to start to learn. And it got to a point where even one or two professional players would show up to sub or substitute for either another team or my team and some of our scrimmages and matches. By around the end of the year, I was keeping up with a lot of the news surrounding the community. And one of the stories that was breaking out on Twitter was that an organization known as Team Mobility, uh was looking for players to rebuild a team now if you don't know who team mobility is that's okay it's not so much important but at the time they had just had a team get knocked out of stage four 
I believe, of the Call of Duty Mobile World Champs. And if you don't know, there are five stages in World Champs. So they were pretty close to competing against the best of the best and not just North American teams, but the entire world. Upon them looking to reset their team and gather players, they were looking for young, promising talent, along with a few older veterans that were able to put together something that could win. As you could probably expect, this did not happen the way I thought it would. I thought I was going to be learning a lot, and I did, but also I didn't get to learn as much as I wanted from who I really wanted to learn it from. There was the reality that I still had to work for my name and my recognition, and for anybody to really give me a good look from the top of the top of the pro scene, I really needed to come out with a bang. I did not come out with a bang. Like at all. Now, coming into the next semi-professional or kind of B-tier tournament or maybe even A-tier, I was playing for Team Mobility's now dubbed Academy Team as they picked up an official roster. And of course, for the qualification rounds of what is known as Mobile Mayhem, aka a big tournament and a lot of different regions throughout the world, I was put up against the main Team Mobility to qualify and we, we lost pretty bad. But of course, there are good things that came out of the losses. Uh, for one, I was able to learn. For two, I was able to start to get my name out there. And, you know, I was able to start separating myself from this rank warrior image. And most importantly, however, was being able to meet other guys within the scene that really had potential and hunger. And I would end up building kind of a career long chemistry with, uh, or so it seems, at least to this point. Now, this leads me up to my next stage, and that will go into part three and four which will be the final stage of this video, which is where we are now. So if you're still here with me in this video, just hang tight. I appreciate you watching this through. Don't forget to like and definitely subscribe. Recommend this to anyone who's trying to make it and I will be able to give you uh, my best possible tips in the next two parts. Now, part three, SXC. Part three revolves heavily around failure. After losing Mobile Mayhem and basically not really getting a serious shot to show what I can do or really to even learn, I didn't know if I wanted to keep going. Still, I grinded for tireless hours, especially for different weapons, leaderboards, and I thought that I, it would result in something, which it kind of did, but it also didn't. The thing that I actually gained from all those hours of grinding the game was commitment to a journey. It wasn't some kind of upgraded skill set necessarily, it was a lot of trial and error and learning how I learned to play the game and how I play the game against other people and how other people play against me and things of that nature. At this time, the person who would really help me get into the scene, who is known as Power, and his social media link will also be in the description of this video, he was in contact with another content creator known as Jokesta, who will also have a link in the description of this video. If you don't know Jokesta, he is the owner of a company known as SXC, and they also create gaming accessories, specifically finger sleeves. And he also has a very big brand, which has been around since really early game release, if I'm not mistaken. Now, Jokesta wanted to start a competitive team again. I had heard that it had kind of failed in the past when he tried to make one and i was really really willing to go with the ride at this point now if you remember that thing i said about meeting people that i still have chemistry with uh for jokes this team uh, power ended up becoming kind of a captain and then shifted to a coach and then more of a manager or owner of the team while i along uh with two other kind of rookieish players were able to continue to try to work together to find other players and build and make a name for ourselves and we were given several opportunities not only did we play in a few um, LATM tournaments or Latin American tournaments, but we were also able to compete here in North America, trying to qualify for Mobile Mayhem again during the spring 2023 season, which unfortunately did not particularly work in our favor 100%. But at the time, one of the teams had dropped out and we were able to get called in for the last few weeks of Mobile Masters. And it counted as my first actual professional series at least in a B or A tier tournament, which really was all I needed at the time. And trust me, we did get absolutely clapped. I mean, not 100% of the time. We definitely came up at certain points and gave some teams a run for their money. Um, but also really, it opened me up to a lot of the understanding of how much work I really had left to put in if I wanted to compete against players who were playing since 2019 during the beta. SXC ended up pushing through and decided we wanted to work harder than ever and make it to the world championships for Call of Duty. 
So what we did is we played stage one and stage two, like everybody else in the public who it's open to. And if your game has open stages and competitions, I'd recommend you play them. During stage three, the open finals, which was still available, I believe, for view on YouTube. Well, we made a long run and finally we played against a very kind of like old OG team and they're very good, which decided to revitalize just at this time. Um, their roster known as ARP Gaming. We put up a good fight for a good amount of time, but unfortunately in the end, the experience and the talent of ARP Gaming was just too much for us. Some of us were demoralized after the loss, knowing that we were only one series away from making it to stage four and decided to take a break. Some people had retired, some people moved on to content creation, and some like myself kept on moving forward with the game. Really, in my mind, the key is to not listen to all the hate that may or may not come your way and to really keep moving forward no matter what. It's good for you to take criticism and advice and it's good for you to pay attention to other content creators and professional players, but also remember that their path is not necessarily going to be your path. The final part, part four, is now. After the loss with SXC, I had realized that I was trying to take on too much of a leadership role, being a captain in IGL or in-game leader, and also a coach at times on top of just being a player and a friend to a lot of the teammates. While this was all very noble, it was also very difficult to balance and maintain, especially since I'm in college right now, and my grades were starting to tank. I was severely underweight and I put so much time into the game that really I didn't have much else besides my girlfriend, my family, and a few other things in life. After the loss to ARP, I had decided that I needed to focus on one or two positions or roles within the game and try to improve on my weaker areas and build even further upon my strengths. This helped a ton and especially helped when I would VOD or look at videos of other pro players. So I guess my advice here is to focus what you're trying to improve on and have a clear-cut goal. Now, I kind of was able to look at these players and add my own style to it, and this doesn't make me the top of the tier pro, but there is a reason why I went from literally unknown to playing with and against the top players in the entire world. Despite all the positivity in this video, there's a lot of realism, and I did have a very hard time dealing with the social media aspect of things. And of course, a lot of the criticism and scrutiny on Discord, which eventually I learned to just ignore and get over with. But of course, it was very hard hearing the criticism from people who don't know how much you've worked for what you are now. I decided to take a small break from the game after a few months post-summer, and what resulted was a sharper and better player that was able to really get back to a few several things in life. One, getting on top of my grades in school. Two, paying attention to my girlfriend. Three, spending more time with my family and friends four gaining weight and working out again and feeling more myself and of course five just being a more professional and well put together player that was able to go out into games and have fun and not take losses too hard or personal see something a lot of pro players had told me was that even though it was admirable that sxc are basically an unknown roster with unknown players had stayed together for so long uh, which is apparently very rare in this scene uh, you know, I, I had kept improving and playing and how great that was. It, it was also their words, uh, quote and unquote, not worth it. A very good player from Mont in Europe known as Jay Say had told me actually recently that in five years, I won't have a Call of Duty mobile uh, anything probably. And so I need to make sure that I take care of myself in life. And that is the advice that I will give to you as well which is don't let your grades tank if you're in school or start skipping out on work or not getting enough sleep or stopping to take care of yourself because you want to play professionally in a game. Because 50 hours of grinding a week is possible, but is not going to catch you up to five years of experience. But if you do put in work and you do play smarter and not harder and take care of yourself while you do it, you will still have fun and you will still make friends and you will still make memories all while getting shots at proving yourself. I'm still not the perfect player, but this is technically my third pro series that I'm in, and currently I'm playing in the ESL Snapdragon Mobile Master Series for North America, basically stage 4. And if you're watching this video, when it comes out, that means that you're able to tune in live too on Call of Duty Mobile or ESL's official page and see me play with my team Goofy Goovers. So 
First was Too Easy Clan, and then Galaxia Gaming, and then T-Mobility, and then SXE, and finally I ended up on Goofy Goovers. And there's no real telling what will happen after this pro series. I may take a break so I can focus on my studies, and or I may keep going depending on how serious the roster opportunities that lie ahead of me are. Either way, I plan to be taking care of myself as every other gamer really should be. Part 5, The Conclusion if I have to summarize everything that this video is about top to bottom and how I got into the pro scene and went from completely unknown to playing with and against the world's best players, I would say a few things can really be emphasized. One is to take care of yourself. Uh, that is the most important thing because if you're not feeling well and functioning well as a person and individual, you will not play well. Even though we don't talk about it, depression, anxiety, stress, and mental health, as long as as, as well as just real life situations affect gamers and because our profession if you want to call it that is very much mental they will affect you so much more than anything else number two is to make sure that you network and reach out there are a lot of ways to do this through youtube discord twitch trovo basically anywhere where call of duty mobile or your game is mentioned and people are talking about it you are able to pretty much network and it is a good idea to reach out number three is to practice and practice uh kind of discriminately and what i mean by that is that if you're not making or indiscriminately rather if you're not making mistakes and you're not losing and you're not failing then you're not really learning and you need to learn in order to be able to be good at something uh some people may just have a natural ability but even with that skill and talent there are still a lot of talented players out there that will never really play at a professional level because they don't have the discipline or they don't want to learn the game in its entirety or they don't want to dedicate the time and they might just have an attitude problem and that's completely okay sometimes those players are better as just content creators or just as players number four is to keep moving forward you are 100% allowed to have friends while you play the game, especially competitively, but understand that when it comes to competitive, a lot of what you do is still very much tied in with business um, and has that focus around it. So how much time you put in, the people that you hang around, and how much you may practice, etc., and etc., is very much reliant on how much money you may be making or what opportunities lie ahead of you and the possible realistic success of a roster that you are on. So remember to be realistic with yourself and remember that not everything in this business is personal and there's still a lot of personality in this business since a lot of teams are formed by friends finally number five i would say is to pace yourself and if you're going absolutely balls to the wall every single day skipping out on sleep like i said in kind of an earlier tip not taking care of yourself then you're really not going to feel it uh, you're going to feel it really a lot. You're not going to feel the best. And the biggest thing is to give yourself time to adjust, practice, train, uh, kind of live life and really get to a point where you can see the culmination of your skills build and grow. And this may be a little faster and this may be a little slower. Like I said, everyone's journey is a little bit different than yours and yours is a little different than everyone else's. If you've enjoyed this video or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. I will try my best to respond immediately. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it and hopefully this helped you and let me know down below what you would like to see in the future or what types of tips you would like to hear in future videos now that I'm starting to get back into long form content. Uh, thank you for stopping by and remember to keep striving for excellence.